So the other day I was zerging around the Blackstone with my guild. We were waiting for this chest to pop and trying fruitlessly to gank anybody we found while waiting. And now one thing you should know is that Echo, my guild, sucks at ganking. Partly because we just suck at ganking and partly because we don't bring any gank swaps to help us catch people. So I was sitting there with my Bridled Fury Hellion shoe build thinking, how am I supposed to catch anyone with this? But from limitation comes the greatest creativity and so I got an idea. And it played out just as I hoped it would in my head. Here's how it's done. So basically you take a dagger build with shadow edge for your W and hellion shoes and you position yourself on a sort of choke point or road where lots of people are going to be moving past. You go between two mobs, either like skinning mobs, even things like bunnies or marmots work, or just regular mobs, and position yourself so that you're sort of in between two of them in the directions that people are going to come from, relatively far away from you. As soon as somebody shows up on the edge of your screen, you toss your shadow edge to the mob that's closest to them, and will pull you to them really fast, and then you'll be able to use your hellion shoes on their mounts. Then, all that's left is to dismount and kill them assuming they're not a guild member or something. So looking more closely at the build now, one of the important things that I found is the ability to use Q2 on the dagger of your choice, as you really need that mobility without having a standard form of shoe. After you dismount someone, you want to be able to sort of catch up to them and get in shadow range or hellion shoe range against. So you need to use a dagger that doesn't really rely on the Q stack, so I went with claws. I think they're by far the best weapon for this. Along with claws, obviously hellion shoes are your shoes. Your helmet is pretty much always going to be fiend cow, so you can purge their boots after you dismount them. And then for chest piece, I went for the assassin jacket to give me uh, some sort of fighting ability and escape ability and just as a general sort of good ganking chest piece. Although if you want more damage, you could also go with something cloth like a cleric rope, for example. For your cape, I went with the undead cape for a little bit more survivability and escapability, but again, if you want more damage, you can use something like a feathered cape. Despite the fact that you're using claws, I would suggest against using a demon cape because you really don't have time to auto attack before you E on the initial E, so it'll probably just get wasted. For food and potions, obviously potions, poisons are really good whenever you're ganking, and then for food, you can use stews, although I was using almonds, and I would suggest using almonds as it just gives you a little bit more mobility. If you find you're running out of mana while I'm trying to chase them down, you can also use a Limhurst Cape. For abilities, we've already talked about it on the Claws, Deadly Swipe for your Q, Shadow Edge for your W, and then for your passive, you can use the first one that bleeds them as it's the most damage, and on the armor, Purge on the helmet, Invis on the chest, and then the Mark of Sacrifice on your boots, with either cooldown passives or damage passives where available, doesn't really matter too much for the armor passives. Looking at strengths and weaknesses of this style of ganking, starting with the strengths, its number one strength is that it's very, very good at dismounting opponents specifically. You get that bonus damage, 35% from the Hellion shoes when you land on them, you land literally directly on top of them, so you have a really, really easy time dismounting most opponents. Similarly to this, it's basically impossible to dodge if you're set up right. If you have a Shadow Edge going directly towards them at max range on a mob, it's practically impossible to react to and dodge. Basically, as soon as they get on your screen, if you react fast enough, you're gonna be howling and shooting to them. You'll be in range very, very quick. Looking at the weaknesses now, similar to the last strength that we mentioned, the mobs can move sometimes into very awkward positions, like they sort of move around as you're waiting, and they can move into worse positions, like sometimes moving into you, making your shadow edge too short, or moving too far away, or too far to the sides, so it can get a little bit awkward sometimes. I usually find myself having to sort of move around and reposition as I'm waiting, just so that the mobs are still positioned in a decent position for me to gank people off of them. So you sort of rely on the mobs not messing you up, especially if you're like max range, they can sometimes even dodge your shadow edge if they move at the wrong time. The biggest weakness is probably how dangerous this form of ganking is. Basically, as soon as you jump out to that mob with your shadow edge and use your hellion shoes on them, it's very dangerous because you no longer have really any mobility left, and if more people are with them a little bit farther behind, you're sort of hung out to dry. Hellion Jews are really an offense-only type 
of items, so running away is pretty difficult. You do have the Q2 spam to help you out a bit, and as well as the invises if you're running them in the Assassin Jacket and the Undead Cape, but yeah, you don't have a whole lot of mobility when you're running away from things. Even your Shadow Edge relies on having mobs to sort of Shadow Edge to you when you're running away. Lastly, for weaknesses, it's very bad against people that are running Fort Sterling Capes. Basically, you can easily catch anyone except if they're on a super, super tanky mount like a bear or if they have a Fort Sterling cape because basically you don't have time to really do anything else besides just E them after your Hellion Shoes reaches them or else they'll get out of range of your E very, very quickly. So if they have a Fort Sterling cape, it will sort of cancel your E and you'll just be stuck with no way to really dismount them past that. So looking at it all together, I think this style of ganking actually really shines more in a group than it does as a solo player. As a solo player, the conditions for sort of finding a good area are pretty strict. You need mobs, you need traffic, but not too much traffic, and you need a little bit of space to chase people down. So if the area is busy or a gank group comes through, someone pushes you off, it might take a little bit while to sort of find another spot, and it's just generally rather dangerous to just go for every target. So I think it really shines more when you're in a group, when you can set up ahead of a target, you know sort of where they're going, and you only need to find sort of one or two mobs to that direction that you can sort of set up by and then catch them very, very easily. That being said, this does offer something to solo ganking that we don't really currently have, which is an ability to sort of reliably, although I don't really want to say reliably, dismount opponents, as the Hellion Shoe damage buff just really comes in big. I found a lot of success in doing this ganking, not even being set up, but just sort of roaming around and just having that reach with the Shadow Edge and the Hellion Shoes. Even if someone gets mounted up doing more normal style of ganking, you can still dismount them and then chase them down afterwards. Luckily, Hellion Shoes are leather shoes, so if you're doing a more normal style of ganking, bringing Hellion Shoes as your shoes is a pretty good option, because normally you can just run on Refreshing Sprint, although if you find a good sort of situation to use Hellion Shoes, I think this can actually be pretty powerful. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you have lots of success using this method to gain.